Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week two of the CSPM podcast, uh, your podcast for all things Chaminade related. I'm Kevin Keel, and today uh, Mark Scott is going to be joining me, McClare House captain, because uh, Cooper Benedict is out of town. So, Mark, welcome to the show. How's it going, everybody? Glad to be here. Thanks for having me, Kevin. Yeah, so um, we had a pretty, uh, pretty uh, well, actually, on Friday, you know, the big basketball game, but we'll get to that later. We're going to start out by talking about eSports, though. Uh, esports new to Chaminade this year. Very interesting. It's uh, you know they converted that. Uh, was it? What's the what's the basement? ARC ARC. Yeah, they the converted ARC. the back room of the ARC, ARC into the gaming room. It's pretty awesome. I know we've had we both do the uh, Cardinal and White newspaper, and we've had a few beans back there. And I haven't played any of the sports down there, but it it, it looks pretty awesome. No, the setups are definitely nice, and um, yeah, I think so. Who's the head of that? I think it's uh, the Undertaker, Charles Heisinger. <laughs> Mr. Charles Heisinger. Uh, Charles Heisinger, 2024, baby. Yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Heisinger is, uh, I think he's the head of that. And um, yeah, no, I think it's cool though. I was looking at some of the YouTube videos and I'm. So I, it looks like a lot of Rocket League? A lot of Rocket League, but okay. some of the stuff that they do in this is like crazy. Like yeah. I'm looking at like Hal Carando's on the team. And I was watching him play, and he's, like, good at it, actually. I wonder if he's going – I mean, can you go to college for that? I'm not even sure. I think you can. I think that they pretty, just started doing that cool. recently, yeah. But it's I don't know. It's just crazy to see – or to think about mm-hmm. how, like, like electronic, like, you know, video games have turned into such a big thing. Market. And now it's, like, yeah. like high schools have teams for Like, I'm looking here, Jefferson High School, Middleton, Northside. You know, it's just, like – all these school and CBC put in that gigantic game room. Yeah. So it's becoming it's, it's a big thing. Um, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. I keep seeing these these emails from Charles Heisinger that saying we're like number one in the nation or something. Is he saying that? I don't know. We'll pull him up. Let's I'm see. Gonna look up, yeah, I'm gonna see if we got. Could it. be totally wrong. Don't uh, don't quote me. Let's see here. We got. Um, we do have an email from him about signing up. In the, oh, they just. Oh wow. They introduce a lot of new sports now. We got Rocket League, Overwatch. Smash, Madden, Fortnite, FIFA, League of Legends, and even more to come, he said. Wow. Uh, but nothing about us being number one. Okay, I was wrong, folks. I'm sorry. <laughs> Misinformation there. Yes. That's fake news, fake Mark. News. Indeed. Yeah. But no, I mean, yeah, I just, I think esports is really cool. Uh, you know, it's a great way to get more kids involved. Kids who aren't into actual um, physical sports, you know, now they're doing this. And I don't know, it's just kind of cool. Yeah, it's also a good segue because, um, you know, you talked about maybe not being into the traditional stuff, but that's what Chaminade's all about. And this coming week, uh, not this week, but the next week will actually be Chaminade Heritage Week, where we'll be uh, essentially supplementing Homecoming Week from past years into Chaminade Heritage Week, where the whole celebration is essentially around the birthday of Father Chaminade, I believe. And... So, we have various themes that we're going to do. Um, I th- I forget what Monday is exactly. I know Tuesday is the Mass, so that's kind of off limits. And then Wednesday is um, Dress Like Your Dad Day. So, we're asking kids to wear, you know, like socks with sandals, jorts, jeans, Hawaiian shirts, fanny packs, um, visors, and, you know, just maybe even if, if you feel like it, breaking out the uh, – all white new balances that's always a classic <laughs> but there has to be grass stains on them that's the only way to go about it <laughs> dress like your dad day yeah that, i'm not gonna lie the house captains never fail to think of the best themes for spirit week heritage week i mean what what is it usually like lumberjack day yeah we always have a lumberjack day and then it's it, it pretty much varies on the theme because in past the last year was um espn the ocho off of uh, the dodgeball movie. And that was a great one. And so that was, I don't know, there was a lot of sports themes, so different sports and Jersey days, I'm sure. We actually steered away from the Jersey theme this year because I feel like it's always a theme. and you know. Yeah, I got to stay away from that. Yeah, and then so I think, so Thursday is Throwback Thursday, and we're doing uh, Green and Orange for McBride. Okay, um, that's cool. Yeah, our, our the one of the branches, the school that branched off in Chaminade. Um, and... Friday, 
I am I'm blanking. But yeah, I'm excited. Oh, not to mention, I forgot. On Wednesday, it is Dress Like a Dad Day, but also we have the hot dog eating contest. No, and, they're bringing that back. And your reigning champion, Mark Scott, is actually <laughs> here. He's going for a second title. Mark Scott is going back for a second title. Back to back, baby, just like the Kansas City Chiefs. You hear to, <laughs> heard it here first. Well, so, I mean, if Mark Scott's going for the second year in a row, which is you, it's Karthik, uh, the Beast Canumary. You know, I think. Sorry, the Lion. I think he's a lot of eye candy. I don't. I'm, I've never really. I've never really worried about Karthik, but who knows? Maybe he's maybe he's been training pretty hard this year, and we'll see. So you're 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 talking a little smack on Karthik. Oh, you, absolutely. You think you got this in the books? Ab- absolutely, yes. All right. Well, um, are they doing the? Are they still doing ice cream at lunch for us? Because I know in years past during Heritage Week. I'm not sure actually. I guess maybe I don't know. I know. Oh, I also have to mention. Um, one of the days is a Chick Fil A day. We brought that back for the week. Um. And I believe we also have a barbecue day. I could be wrong, but yeah, I mean, hopefully we uh, can supplement this into homecoming week because I know a lot of people enjoy that, and we didn't really have that this year. So I mean, that's really cool. And uh, you know, speaking of themes, something me and you were actually just talking about in our uh, journalism class was uh, last year the milkman. Yeah, uh, Jason Shackleton. Jason Shackleton. So that I don't it's know. Very unfortunate. We can't have a uh, a second reincarnation of it because. <laughs> Being that the student section's out this year, uh, but you know the juniors can always pick up the torch and next year maybe who knows maybe baseball season will get something I don't true. know. I mean that this spring, if student sections are allowed the baseball games, those might be the most packed baseball games yeah. I think that stadium has ever seen. We may have to pack the sack. Pack the <laughs> pack the sack. Um, uh, varsity hockey lost to CBC last night. Yeah, very unfortunate. You know, I mean, I. Uh, I got on to commentating the tail end of the season. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate to see all the all the seniors work so hard and then just have to play a, a good school like CBC. But perhaps the CBC was, I mean, was that the playoffs? I believe so. Oh, so we're out. I could be wrong. I believe so. I think that was the playoffs. That is very sad to hear. Uh, well, yeah, CBC is really good this year. Well, I mean, when are they not good at hockey? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that sucks. But. You know what's weird though is, um, it's just so much. It's such a weird year this year because obviously, I mean, I I'm not speaking for everybody, but for me, varsity hockey games going to playoff varsity hockey games are is just like the best sporting event to go to. Oh, hands down. And so it's like you we don't even know if it's the play like that. It's just that's the type of year it is. You don't even know if it's the playoffs because you haven't been to any of the games and you really haven't been able to follow them too much, which really is just unfortunate. I'm I'm never gonna forget. Two years ago, mm. playing CBC, mm. first game two. So it's uh the, I think it's like the Elite Eight, or whatever it's called. Playing CBC and we somehow beat them in the first game. Oh my god! They're, they were so much better than us this year. We beat them in the first game, come back second game, they beat us like five one in regular time, and then, so now we go to shootouts, and the fiercest leaders of the hockey team somehow pawed a dub and but the funny thing is that wasn't the story of oh, the no. night oh no not, not just the fearless hockey players but the fearless uh leader once again the yeah. guy sitting next to me mark scott uh got in a little bit of a scuffle try my best after my that best. game you want to you want to elaborate on that a little bit yeah you know it was just a very passionate uh <laughs> very passionate night through and through you know after after the shootout win that was probably one of the most memorable uh sports games in my life for me personally and um you know the uh the tensions were high you know we were moshing in the uh student section you know i wasn't done i was i wanted to continue the party you know i was i was fired up and you know my my lips got a little loose in the parking lot (laughs) then the fist came a little loose and uh next thing i know got a broken nose and and your your pictures over half of exactly (laughs) gained about 500 instagram followers so you know we only came out on top it's okay the next day was the day of your life, though, walking into the cafeteria yeah, and getting yeah. that standing ovation. Nothing like uh, <laughs> having the entire cafeteria stand up on their chairs and give me the standing ovation. And then Father Ralph joined in. I don't even know if he knew what he was clapping about, but, you know, <laughs> yeah, he was just yeah, always. He was enjoying the moment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to miss Father Ralph. He just announced his retirement. He did, um, and well-deserved for sure. Uh, well-deserved. Hey, no, thank you, Father Ralph, for all you've done for us. I know you're not leaving for another year, but... Uh, you know, you've given some great memories and you always have a smile on your face and give us a pat on the back as we walk by. So it's going to be sad seeing him go. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely glad he made it till um, we graduated. Oh, for sure. And um, Dr. Guidry will do a great job. Uh, for sure, He'll be a really yeah. good transfer of power, for sure. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's going to be a great successor. He's but. a very personable guy who, I mean, when you work in the middle school for that long, you kind of – kind of learn how to put up with some stuff and i think he'll do a great job yeah i never was here for middle school so i didn't have him as my principal but um i've you know i obviously still have talked to him before and he, yeah he's, he's a great guy he'll, dude. yeah he'll fill that position nicely um in other news though shamanad the varsity basketball team had a very big standout win on friday night against the cbc yeah it was awesome i mean i uh i had uh, texted Coach Ben and I said, "Congrats on the win." You know, um, nobody likes seeing TBC fail like me. So, <laughs> oh yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, uh, that was actually our first time beating them in two years. Really, I did not know that. Yeah, two years. I mean, you know, they just they don't have Kale Bluff anymore. So, who is not doing too hot? No, in North Carolina, not uh, not at all. Yeah, I think he's shooting like twenty eight percent. Wow, in the field. Uh, kind of unfortunate to see. It's always cool seeing St. Louis mm-hmm. kids and represent. Yeah, yeah represent St. Louis. But, um, but yeah, anyway. That game, um, statement game for Chaminade. For sure. Um, you know, CBC overtook us at number one rankings a couple weeks ago once we lost to Vashon. And uh, Chaminade proved on Friday that we're still better than them and we're still the best large school team in the area. Yeah. It, I mean, that was for sure a, a huge win. And um, we'll just look to take it on to the, to the second half of the season and, you know, show out. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think uh, as the season keeps going on, this team keeps – the, the chemistry keeps building, you know, once mm-hmm. again, very young team, but they're starting to really put it together, and it, they're they're looking great. I mean, Terrace, once again, outstanding game. Not, I mean, mainly this time defensively. I think I was watching the highlights, and I, he had to have had, like, five blocks. Wow. I mean, it was insane. Yeah. It, That's awesome. One of CBC's players, uh, short point guard, I, he drove by one of our defenders, goes up for a layup. And then there's this moment of, like, realization by him. He looks up and sees Terrace. What have I done? And they, they lock <laughs> eyes. They lock eyes. And Terrace is just looking at him like, yeah, dude. I'm going not, to, I'm gonna not, murder you and your family this with this play. I'm going to end this man's career. And, yeah, Terrace just smacks it off the glass. And then the kid just stands on the other end while everyone else runs back down the court. He's just kind of there like, what just happened? <laughs> it was it, it was kind of funny to look at. Just doing his best to not just admit how embarrassed he is from oh, Terrace yeah. Reed. Oh man, it's fun watching him play. Yeah. Um. What's not, his you know, What's his best out offer at the moment? Do you know? Oh man, I I ooh, I think he has Michigan State. Wow, good uh, for him, dude. You know, I'm actually gonna look that up right now. He's gonna kill it. Oh no, for sure. Yeah, he, and not just him, but you know, Damian also playing great. Nate Strotter uh, playing really good off the bench. Brian Ward running the point well. Um, the Serbian, Philip Sinabad. Phil, yeah. Love watching him play. You know, the whole team just looks good. Yeah, I mean, Florida I – Florida and Michigan wow, State. That's Creighton. awesome. Maybe he's, he'll follow in uh, Brad Beal's footsteps. Maybe. Go to Florida. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it is kind of unfortunate. Um, not that we haven't had a stellar basketball program for the past couple of years. It's just – you know, we have such a young team, and we're a year ahead of them, so we won't be able to get to see them for their last year. And, I mean, you know, obviously senior year, they'll be the most developed they will or throughout their entire year or high school experience. Yeah. So, you know, it's just I, I, I'll definitely be watching some CSPN broadcasts from whatever college I end up attending. Oh, 100%. And hopefully they'll be in the new stadium next year. That's on the way. Yeah. The stadium that, been, or that was donated by Bradley Beal. Shout out Bradley Beal. Who's by the way leading the <laughs> NBA in points right now? Points yeah. per game. He, uh, I think I saw something. Have they gotten a win yet? Have the Wizards gotten a win? Yeah, they're three and eight. Right I'll, now. I'm gonna pull up. So I actually sent Coach Bennett this uh, this post by Sports Center. Um, pulling it up now. Okay. Let's see. Um, okay, so I said, or I sent. This is ESPN. Um, Beal leads the NBA with 34.9 points per game and the Wizards are three and eight so my response to that in my DM to coach Bennett was just pain period (laughs) and uh (laughs) he sent me the shaking shaking his head emoji and then he said pain is right man I want him to win so bad and I just I yeah it's just very a very unfortunate situation for Brad Beal the thing that's like that sucks about it too is that if if the Wizards had a winning record right now he would probably be first in mvp voting 
averaging 35 yeah. points a game. And not just that, but he'd definitely be an all-star. Like, last year... That was ridiculous. He, he got snubbed from the all-star team, averaging, like, 32 points a game. And That's just unreal. because the Wizards' record... and But then you, you have a guy like DeMontis Sabonis get in, who's averaging 17 a game. Like, Yeah. I mean, it's... it's I mean, it's that, uh, I guess, just the big city bias, too. I mean, you know, it's... If you're a New York team or L.A. team, you're going to be more uh, fond over than... And not that DC is not a big city, but you know if you're not if you're struggling like you said, and you're just not on a good team, even if you're performing, you're always going to be underlooked because your team's not succeeding. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it, unfortunate. it's unfortunate, but that's how it goes. Uh, Bradley Beal isn't the only former Shamanad alum though succeeding in the NBA right now. Celtics uh, are killing it. Celtics are killing it, and Tatum's killing it, averaging uh, I think 27 a game, wow. seven rebounds and like four, three or four assists. Um, all NBA numbers right there for sure. Wow, yeah, that's so. that's crazy and good for him, man. I'm glad. Uh, you know, I'm not a huge NBA fan, but the Wizards and Celtics will always be my two favorite teams, simply because of Brad and Jason. So yeah. it's always nice to see them succeed, even if Brad's team may not be getting the wins. At least he's, you know, he's getting paid, and so is Jason, and they're uh, succeeding stat wise. Yeah, it's you know, it's always fun just when people look at highlights of. Uh, Tatum or Bre- or Bradley from a uh, high school, and they're like Shamanad. Okay, and I'm just like, yeah, like I go to school there. It's just like I don't know. It's just like cool. Like you don't really think about it mm-hmm. now, but like after a while, you kind of realize how cool it is to say that two NBA players, like like all star level NBA players, went to your high school. Yeah, you for sure. Play. I mean, my that's one of the things my brother always told me when he went to college. He would meet people from Canada, New York. LA that came he was at Mizzou and they'd be he they'd ask him where he went to high school and he didn't even have to say it was in St. Louis he just said Chaminade and they were like oh my god that that's the big basketball school in St. Louis Mm -hmm. and uh he always thought that was really cool and it's just it's definitely interesting because I mean it's an experience that not a lot of people ever have um yeah yeah no I mean yeah when I was in eighth grade before I was going to school here I was in uh on spring break in Florida and uh, I had my or my Chaminade hoodie on that I got when I was accepted. And I was in a store there, and some dude who was from, like, I don't even know where he was from. He was not from St. Louis, though. And he was just like, Chaminade? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, Jason Tatum? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. And he was like, cool. And just walked away. So, That's I don't awesome. Know. Yeah, it was just kind of cool. Um, so, who got in the uh, NFC and AFC championships? Ah, man. If Mahomes plays, I got Chiefs all the way. But if he doesn't play, it's... Dude, he's scaring me. I'm I'm a big Chiefs fan, if anybody listening doesn't know. But, I mean, when he came up after that hit, he was stumbling around. And I was... And why Andy Reid allows that man to run the football? He did it twice, mind you. And, the okay, I will give him this. The first run was a touchdown. It was a big touchdown. I get it. You're on the goal line. But let's... I mean, you know, he's only so durable. He's a quarterback. Let's let's be smart here. We're in the yeah. we're in the playoffs, and uh, Andy Reid. I thought he would learn his lesson because uh, the Chiefs played the Broncos last year, and Mahomes ran a QB sneak sneak and uh, dislocated his kneecap. So I just thought Andy learned his lesson, but hopefully it will, it will work out. Thank God, Chad Henney is Jesus, <laughs> and Chad Henney just <laughs> saved the day with that with the dive at the end of the game, and. Not to mention Andy Reid just was the, put the most confidence on Chad Henney that any, anyone would ever do on that fourth and one, and uh, I don't know if it was the right call, but I'm happy it worked out because otherwise that could have been bad. Um, yeah, but Henny thing is possible, baby. Henny thing <laughs> is possible, and I mean. that so I mean you know my you know my pick on uh, the AFC Championship. I got. I actually got an up an upset on the uh, NFC Championship. Or, yeah. I'm thinking Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes are going to face off in the Super Bowls, and Tom Brady's going to defeat Aaron Rodgers. Heard it here first. You think the Bucks are beating the Packs? I do. I think, you know, I think the Packers have the hot hot offense that they have with uh, Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers. With that being said. I saw a very good Bucks defense shut down Michael Thomas, and you know, I mean. Drew Brees, I'm glad he's getting his, his retirement. Um, I don't think he's the quarterback that he was, and he's not anywhere near Aaron Rodgers' level. 
Um, with that being said, I think the Bucks defense has it in them to shut down the Green Bay offense. And I just, I don't know. I also would really love to see a uh, Mahomes and Brady rematch so Mahomes can get his revenge. Yeah. Um, and from the AFC Championship game in 2018, and yeah, I mean, I think it'd be, it'd be awesome, and uh, yeah, that's those are my picks. Mahomes has not missed a conference championship. I don't feel, and, you NFL. know, I feel like the media does butter up Mahomes a lot. Oh, for sure, and that which I totally understand because it, it it is over the top, but I feel like something that's not being covered is the fact that. This will be his third year starting, and this is his third straight AFC championship. And I mean, I don't, I'm sure Brady's probably done three straight. It's just, I don't know that there's a lot of quarterbacks that have done that, and I think that's pretty impressive. And not to mention, I mean, if they do make the Super Bowl, this will be his second, almost third. And the, the first year that he lost to Tom Brady, um, there's a couple ticky tack calls that changed the game, and not to mention Frank Clark going off sides in overtime. But also, I mean, if Tom Brady gets the ball in overtime, you know, if he gets yeah. it first, you're you're done, you know. Yeah, I mean, never count out Brady. Um, I personally thought the Saints were gonna uh, kick the crap out of uh, Tampa Bay, so I was already wrong on that. And I think the Packers are gonna kick the crap out of Tampa Bay, but never count Brady out. And I mean, the Bucks look scary, man. They're looking good. You also got to take into account the fact that Aaron Rodgers is winning the NFL MVP, and there's the curse behind that mm-hmm. where yeah that's true almost every time when we're when the uh nfl mvp winner gets the mvp he almost never wins the super bowl who won the mvp last year lamar lamar yeah. and then the year First before was mahomes, mahomes and mahomes lost in the afc championship that's right the year okay so tom brady tom brady in 2017 that's when the exception here let's look it up actually brady was he won MVP in 2017. Yeah, he snubbed it from Todd Gurley. That was ridiculous. Um, okay, I was. So he won an MVP at like 39 years old. Yeah. Jeez. Um, well, fell. that's why he's still playing at 43. He's yeah, dude. Players. I mean, the way he's playing, God, I don't even know. He could, he could keep going for two or three more years. I mean, who knows? Yeah, I think he said he wants to play until he's 45. Yeah. So. 2016, Matt Ryan. 2015, Cam Newton. Um, oh, yeah, Cam Newton lost to the Broncos when they were, what, 15-1 and one that year? Yeah, they were insane. Yeah, I don't know. And I personally, you know, I think Rodgers had a fantastic year. I think if you rush for 2,000 yards, I think you got to give it to Derrick Henry, which he did. Because mm-hmm. what is there, eight? I think there's eight backs that have ever done that. Yeah. I mean – in the final game, you rush for over 250 yards to, to get the, the mark. That's unreal. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't. I think it's hard for – I think that's why Gurley got snubbed. I yeah. think it's really hard for quarterback voters. Quarterback bias. Quarterback bias. Like, same with the Heisman. Devon, or, uh, Devontae Smith was the first wide receiver to win it in, like, 30 years. And wow. then, you know, I, I only a handful of running backs have won it. It's usually, like – I'm shocked Mac Jones didn't win it just because he was the one feeding the ball to Devontae. But, yeah. Um, well, but anyway, I think we're going to wrap this up soon. Uh, we've almost hit our time limit. Um, Mark, you got any last things to say? No, just thanks for having me, and it was fun. I had a great time. Yeah, we'll bring you back on soon for sure. And uh, thank you guys for listening to week two of the podcast. Um, you know, maybe maybe it's more than just things Shamanad. I don't know. Maybe, maybe just a little more than things Shamanad. Uh, But anyway, thank you guys, and I will see you next week.